Hello, hello, hello. We are making a video together and this time I am equipped with a large water spray bottle. Just in case, just in case the Velociraptor decides to get up and jump against me. <laughs> I have the spray bottle here. This is that is good, good, good. I hope it doesn't fall. Okay, so anyway, I want to make a follow-up video for Sandra Hughes because I am still thinking about Sandra Hughes. And this situation does not go anywhere. And it's just this, situ this situation, this unresolved case, just stays in my brain. And I have to keep thinking about this. And I love that woman. I love her infinitely much. There's something in her face. This whole thing goes far, far further and beyond that what people talk about. Okay, so then there was one report of a guy, he talked about missing pe people that went missing in national parks, a whole lot of people. But he didn't get into the details of the metaphysics and all of that. And then other people, talk about in lengths what the little boy said and what the hiker said and the hunter said and so on and that case just does not go anywhere so I'm gonna be thinking about this now for the rest of my life that is what I'm gonna do I have to get one of these one of these feather things that are out there, I call them the fluffies. I have to get one for the baby dog to play with. They are, they are fresh right now. And I have to get one. Paul doesn't like me to use that in the house <laughs> because they flock off the, the seeds because those feather things are actually the seeds of that horsetail type of plant. So once they get, once the feather things become really, really, really feathery and fluffy, kind of like the dandelion seeds, like when once, once they look like they have, they're sp they have split hair, like my hair, that's when you don't want to take them in the house because whatever you touch with, with them then, these seeds will attach themselves to your shelves and, and, artwork and everywhere okay. but right now they're in the in the fresh state they, they have just come out they're basically blooming right now and in that fresh state when you touch them they feel kind of they feel more like like a fresh cotton or like a, almost like a, a synthetic fur but but the microfiber one that feels kind of like moist a little bit. So right now they're in the, the perfect state to take in the house and use as a broom for the wall, as a dust broom. So, and that's what I'm gonna do because I have critical spider webs <laughs> hanging from my ceiling in my bedroom that are hanging very very close to my thermoscan that is standing there open without the lid on because later on I'm gonna be making myself more pineapple wheat tea and I don't want those spider webs to be falling into my tea <laughs> thermoscan that would not be so good I don't know what that would do if I grew that up with boiling water I don't know what that might cause hallucinations so <laughs> I'm not gonna take any chances 
with those kind of things that I don't know anything about. But anyway, so I don't know. I have to research this horsetail and see if that has any medicinal properties. So maybe it does. I think it does. All plants have some form of medicinal property, but unknown to most people, of course. So it's a matter of try and error. <laughs> you test on yourself these kind of things but I'm not going to test the spider webs on myself or on anyone so I'm gonna just leave the spider webs alone but plants yeah I have already made tea with ivy ivy is very good for the lungs you know to clear up a cough or kind of like asthmatic symptoms so ivy any kind of ivy is really really good for that so and dandelion is really healing for your intestines it heals stomach problems or intestinal problems or gas <laughs> so that's really good so beans i have to stay away from beans for sure i'm not gonna i'm not gonna eat any more beans i also saw someone talk about this so soybeans okay soybean products I don't know if I'm gonna eat soybeans raw, maybe, but, or fermented like tofu, but I like soy milk. I love the way that tastes. So, and if I drink that in moderation, if I drink just like a cup of soy milk per day, that's really good. It's really beneficial, tastes great, but, I heard that if you drink too much of soy milk or any kind of soy product that is not fermented, then it can cause intestinal problems and so can chocolate in the same way. Okay, so I never heard anything negative about carob, the carob bean. So, and all of those are sort of beans, those are like husks of that or kind of the, the carob looks like a casket actually that that is very large almost as long as a banana and dark brown and looks almost like a chocolate bar you know so but hard dogs like to chew on those that's good for dogs and if you pry that open you can see the seeds inside so those husks coffins the contain the seeds and they protect the seeds in there so once that gets embedded into the earth or into a, a moist place somewhere then I guess they will this this coffin opens up and those seeds will start germinating and becoming seedlings and making trees so that's very nice but anyway, I'm still thinking about Sandra Hughes. The situation is just keep that just keeps on going through my brain 24 hours, literally, you know, throughout the night. I wake up thinking about her and I'm also spooked out, but the spook part has dissipated for the most part. What I'm thinking about now is just unbelievably deep compassion for her what an amazing soul god level soul she was an environmentalist i don't know if she's still alive or not so that's it's a completely open-ended case because people have seen her with a bruise on her face so whether that was her ghost or whether that was her being in a delirium or something from 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 elevation sickness or something like that I don't know so but what the little boy said is very very alarming he said we need to help her and she is lying with her face down and she's dead he said and maybe that was just an image 
that she has projected into his vision field that the other people couldn't pick up on. She projected an image into the vision field and maybe that's not even the case. Maybe she is not dead. Maybe she just wanted to create an image that speaks louder than words, that speaks alarm, you know, alarm to an open mind, that little boy that's still open to the cosmos, to the infinite. So, and so that's what she projected into the Johnson Meadows area, that image that he was able to see and he was able to perceive the message of it, which was, I need your help. I need you, all of you to go out there and, and start looking for me, okay? I am in danger. And he said she's in danger, but at the same time he said she's dead. So how can she be in danger if she is dead? I'm gonna talk about something that Rudolf Steiner was talking about, but First, I want to say, so I think that there could be many possibilities. It could be something like what Rudolf Steiner was talking about. But it could also be a message projected out there for the boy to perceive a woman lying down with the face down in the dirt, with the legs up. It's a very kind of like a graphic sort of, but not too graphic, you know, for the child, obviously. If she, if she cared, she wouldn't want to terrify a child. It terrified the adults way more than the child. So, or the family made this whole thing up just to, as a prank or for social media attention. But I don't think so. They don't look like they need to do something like this. They don't look desperate to me in any way of needing media attention. They already have plenty of media attention. They are so gorgeous looking, the whole family. The, 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 the mother, the father and the children, they, are, they look like dolls, all of them. I mean, they look like animation figures on the internet like someone created those you know so that's how gorgeous they look with the little girl the little daughter of two years old or something i i was sure that was a doll i was i, I looked at that photo okay so here's the little boy with his doll yeah he has a doll that little boy has a doll it's cute you know i thought i look again wait a minute <laughs> that's a two-year-old little girl who looks exactly like a plastic t plastic doll. My God, amazing. You know, like a fairy tale Barbie baby doll. <laughs> I mean, incredible. That's how, that's how stunning all of these, these people look. So, no, they don't need this extra media attention. So, and they seem they seem very down to earth. They seem very, they seem genuine. They seem like they like nature. They seem like they are, they love life. So, no, I don't, I don't think they would make this story up. So I tend to lean in the direction of believing that boy, what he said. The adults didn't see anything. They looked for that. They looked for that image that the boy saw. And they couldn't find anything. So I think that Sandra Hughes projected that image, whether alive or dead, projected that image to him as a means of of getting his and the other people's attention and getting that out to law enforcement in order to go and start looking for her. But she's not anywhere in Yosemite. That's what I believe personally. 
Central Hughes is not at Yosemite anymore. That is my, I mean, I just keep on thinking about all of these different scenarios, you know. Paul has his very, very reason, bottom, ground-based explanations. And yeah, I'm not ruling that out. But there are so many other things that we have to take into consideration. Senor Hughes was a highly experienced backpacker and hiker and extremely clean and environmentally conscious. She would never scatter her stuff around. She would never take all of her stuff, including her paperwork in her car, like insurance papers and whatever, and, and just scatter this outside of her car or SUV. And then five miles later into Yosemite, have a tent up and then scatter all of her belongings around. She would never do this. And then move on and walk on for another five miles or, or three miles and leave her orange, yellow, sleeping bag in the middle of a plateau just like that that doesn't seem like that doesn't seem like a reasonable explanation to me so I don't think that happened she would not do this okay and it doesn't look like a bear went through this a bear would never pull out paperwork they tried to make it look like a bear went through this or a crazy person went through this, some stalker maybe. They tried, they did this to defuse the, the entire situation. Okay. To lead people astray. That's what, that's what I think. This is what I think happened. This is just my theory. I don't know if it's true. I think Sandra Hughes was tired of the city and all of this. She, she went to Yosemite, she told her parents, I need to take a break from civilization, and that's what happened. You know, I, I want to be by myself for a couple of weeks out there in Yosemite. Okay, I want to go backpacking, I want to enjoy nature. I love it there. So she went out there she parked her SUV at a at the trailhead, I think, okay, where everyone else parks their cars, okay, like a, a trailhead parking lot somewhere, okay, that's what I think. And she took her her backpack with the sleeping bag and with her food and everything, and she started to walk onto the trail, leaving her SUV on that parking lot. And she hiked for five miles before she set up tent and, and, and slept there during the night. And I believe that where she set up her camping place, her tent, that because she ha she was there for a little bit longer for a night and the evening so she was there for several hours obviously that a helicopter flying over the area has seen her camping spot there with the tent and everything and they probably observed her from above. Oh, a single woman camping way out there in the wilderness. So they circle around, they make sure there is no other backpacker and hiker anywhere near. They descend down into, I be believe that was Johnson Meadows where she set up her first night they descend down there with the helicopter 
and they storm her tent, they handcuff her, they put her in a helicopter, and they, they scatter her belongings out there to mislead law enforcement. They take her sleeping bag, they bring that to another location on that plateau and just drop it there to lead people astray. And then they go over to her car, they threaten her. You have to tell her, tell us where your car is. So she tells them it's at the, at the Trierheit parking lot. And they, they don't fly to the Trierheit parking lot. That would be too obvious. They tell their, their collaborators to drive to that Trierheit parking lot and to give the, that person the key to her car. So they got the key from her and all. And then that person is gonna is then scattering all of her stuff around to to mislead law enforcement and then leaves in his own car. And in the meantime, they take Sandra Johnson to their Kiwi farms or. FEMA camp or whatever or or remote human trafficking concentration camp whatever is going on out there in the world and they rape her repeatedly every day they get paid for that for more for more customer for more customers to come in raping her and maybe a customer who pays extra much to murder her and cut her up into pieces there's no telling what people might be doing or okay there are some really insane people. There are a lot of insane people without money and there's also a lot of insane people that have money. And they, that's, they spend their money on snuff videos and or anything like butcher tourism. Things that are still right at the margin of legality but totally unethical that is what they spent their money on or I heard there's a university out there in Oregon they, I heard that in Salem Oregon there is a university where they do cruel tests on animals uh, that are that that don't even serve any purpose at all that are that are just blindly approved by the university and what's really going on uh, uh, an insider told me that first uh, I mean like I never heard it from anyone else that was a woman who has worked there she didn't reveal her name to me but she told me this I met her on YouTube a long time ago a couple of years ago maybe maybe eight years ago or nine years ago she told me that she said she's she has worked at that university. I think she was also involved into a master's program or something. She had to quit this because of what she saw. And she reported that to animal rights organizations. And for them to get to investigate it is very, very difficult. They would have to have literally secret agents that risk their lives to get in there and, and do an, an undercover investigation on this. But what she saw there was just, that was just so horrific that it shook her up for the rest of her life. Cruel, cruel tests on monkeys and dogs and other animals 
that served no, pur no purpose at all, tests that were repeatedly done over and over and over. And the people that participated, the so-called staff members, weren't actually staff members. They were, they were people with money that paid them under the table to legally do cruel things to animals under the name of university and some kind of pseudo-study. Okay. It's those kind of things that are happening in the world. Trust me, as an activist, I come across all kinds of stuff. And, or the, the bear butchering, bear hunting that they used to allow in Russia, that used to be legal. All the animal rights activists worldwide got together, myself and Paul included, and with numerous, numerous plea letters and petitions addressing Vladimir Putin. And he said, I, I agree with you. I'm going to sign this into effect. And he signed a bill into effect that, that banned this type of butcher tourism, that type that banned any kind of hunting and shooting of bears out there in Siberia and those places where the bears are there they're like tame you know and the wolves too because there used to be no people so they'll come up to a person and they respect you and they want to be petted guess why the animals started to hate people later on why they hate people in Alaska and those closer places to, to bigger cities and stuff like this, or suburbs, because they had made bad experiences with humans. That's why. Okay. If they don't make bad experiences throughout several generations, why should they hate them? There's no reason for them to hate them. They will come up to you, they won't be petted. The wolves are very, 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 they're just like dogs. Large wolves in Siberia come up to you. They come up to your dog. They're nice to your dog. They're nice to you. They are checking you out. They're very curious. Okay, they like to be petted. They like that contact. You know, socialization. They're very social. So, once they get to encounter cruel people, psychopaths, over and over and over again, they don't trust them anymore, and they will actually pass on this fear to their future generations okay, that's what's going I had to mention this okay because a lot of people don't understand anything about wild animals and the corporations are not gonna tell you the truth about wild animals they want you to not like them the, the, the corporations want you to fear wolves they want you to get a completely wrong idea about them because the corporation the cattle ranching industry wants to get rid of them that's why and they want your approval for it that's all there is to it and in Hollywood the movie great uh, gray wolf or something some kind of horror film they made about gray wolves which is completely 100 100% 100 false biologically this entire film okay is not based on truth and they made the wolves to look like werewolves and and stuff like this you know I mean like they look like wolves but of, of course they used mask and they used animation they, they couldn't could not even use real wolves to play a psychopath because I talked to Paul about this earlier someone who is kind-hearted and a wolf is could never play someone who is not kind-hearted in a genuine form. Okay, so that's why one time I, I watched this film Kujo by Stephen Stephen King, long time ago. I only watched parts of it. I saw was the the the, the that that mountain dog the the Bernard mountain dog 
they had in that film, Kujo, and the way he was attacking the woman, he was attacking her with kisses and slobber, okay, so that's, and it was very, very clear. Yeah, anyone who knows dogs could clearly see that, okay, but the, the people that made that film, they, they, they thought that it would look like he attacked the woman or slashed her or something like this. So they didn't understand that. I mean, that was very, very obvious that this dog loves that woman and fell right on top of her and licked her in the face. But they showed the dog and the woman from way further back so that to mislead people and think that this that's an attack. And Stephen King is corporate, he's religious. He's either deliberately making dogs look bad or he is uh, some kind of Muslim apologist or he's some kind of politically correct uh, Black Lives Matter or some, some total irrational, I don't know what goes, I don't know, I don't know what he was thinking with that film, but that is absolutely unethical and wrong and horrific. It's a lie, that whole film. Okay, so that's not how dogs are. And, and St. Bernard's are rescue dogs. Okay, they risk their lives in Switzerland. They have been for generations and generations, for hundreds of years, have been, have been going into thick snow, risking their lives, saving people that have fallen into avalanches and stuff like this. So what a horrible, misleading picture that I don't know what that was for, for the corporations or because he's, he's doesn't, it's not thinking or be, I mean, just to involve an animal into this just as a theme even, as a book even, I find highly, highly, un, uneth highly unethical. So these kinds of things are happening out there in the world. Most people are not informed about this. Most people don't question what they see, you know, they go by the first lopsided explanation and they close their file, they close their case, law enforcement, they're not gonna go out there for a year, they, I don't know how long they did a search and rescue, but in Yosemite, Sandra Hughes is not in Yosemite, that's what I believe. She was brought with a helicopter, maybe even with a, with an orange medic ambulance helicopter that someone bought for this alibi purpose in order to 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 be scanning Yosemite for lone hikers there are a lot of lone hikers and backpackers that are getting lost that vanish they don't vanish Nobody vanishes, okay. so they get picked up and my guess is they get put into, they get put either into human trafficking rings or into slave labor that is un, like il, totally illegal, undercover, unearthed slave labor operations, something like this. There's all kinds of horror happening in the United States that the FBI, CIA, and law enforcement, most people are not even aware of, okay, disguised. Those people are cunning that run operations like this. So, and I think that there's a possibility that Sandra Hughes was alive when she projected that image to the boy. There's a p possibility that sh she was al alive when she projected herself into Yosemite to be seen by hikers with a bruise. 
on her face, a bruise on her face, that looks also to me very much like there was a fight. She fought for her life and they shoved her face down into the ground onto a rock and that's also why she projected that image to the boy. Her face was shoved down onto the ground, onto a rock, bruised up, scratched up, raw, her, the side of her face. Oh, baby dog, what's going on? Oh, no. Oh, man. oh boy, I hope he didn't eat that bumblebee earlier. Oh, God. Oh, baby dog. Oh, baby dog. Oh, my God. God, that's awful. I hope he didn't eat the bumblebee. Oh, man. Baby dog. Oh, that makes me worry. Oh, God. Always getting into trouble. And the bumblebees. The bumblebees are falling, literally falling off the plants. And the bumblebees have no more strings. They're falling off here at the other house, too. Yeah. They're falling on the ground, and that's why the baby dog goes after them. They're already on the ground, cr crawling around. And they can't even fly anymore. They don't even have the strength to fly. Those are major, important pollinators on Earth. Pesticides are destroying bumblebees and bees and other pollinator insects. This is real serious. This can cause real serious problem with food produ production. Food plants depend on pollinators. If we lose the pollinators, we won't have food plants anymore. This is real serious. There, there are people in China that are already pollinating their plants by hand with a cotton swab because they already have this epidemic of a drastic decline in pollinators. All of this is important to mention. All of these things are important. I'm terribly worried about all of this. I'm terribly worried for this planet and all species. Absolutely terrified. And I know that Sandra Hughes was as well, or is, if she's still alive. She's a very strong environmentalist. And again, that could also be a politically motivated snatching. The corporate agenda wants to get rid of environmentalists. There was an environmentalist lady murdered by a, by a, by a psychopath out there somewhere. I forgot where that was now. And she had a house all, all way out there in the wilderness. Very remote, very dangerous. You can't be living, particularly not as an environmentalist, you cannot be living out there by yourself remotely. If the corporate agenda, if they find out you're an environmentalist, you live out there remotely, they are sent a middleman over, guaranteed. That's what happened to her violent, violent psychopaths came over and it was a humongous struggle. She put up a humongous struggle with him but there was no way she could win. He was way bigger and stronger than her. Finally, he finally got her head and smashed her into the ground, made her unconscious then cut her head off. This could very well be politically also instigated, this entire thing, but then to made, made to look like a maniac went out there without any political purpose. So one time a red-haired woman, environmentalist, was shot on her own property by a hunter. He knew she was living there. She was in her garden playing with her dog shot her in the head, dead. 
when the court trial came, he said he defended himself. He got a lawyer. He said it was an accident. Everyone bought it. The judge closed the case. It was murder. Okay. He hated that woman. They already had disputes and all of that. Oh, so that's very obvious. Okay. So these things are happening. Okay. And with Sandra Hughes being an environmentalist, a strong environmentalist, writing blogs, writing articles, bringing awareness, going out in nature by herself, not aware of how insane and how corrupt and how greedy and how psychopathic the majority of humans are. Very naive. I'm not holding it against her. I'm not blaming her at all. How can she know? How can she know all of this? Most people don't. Most people don't realize it. We talked to a guy not that long ago who lives in near the other house. Contractor guy. He thinks most people are good. Inherently good. Paul heard that statement many times. No. They are not. Okay. And that's just reality. Check. Fact check here. Okay? So let's face it. If we want to heal something, we first have to face the facts. If we don't face the facts, we cannot heal it. If we go into denial and into full-blown anosognosia about the, 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 the state of affair worldwide, then we are in a brain fog. We, are, we cannot see the things for what they are. Clean the doors to perception and see. Okay, that's my message. From the sky perspective, the bigger picture of everything is much more complex. Psychopaths suffer on the inside. They live a miserable life. They tell themselves that they're on top of the world and they get all the chicks and they get money and whatever. But inside, there is hell. Okay. If there wasn't hell, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. There were people that came forward. It's also on YouTube. People with a mask over their whole face, voice distorted. They came out to law enforcement and they said, I'm terrified for my life and for my family's life, but I have to blow the whistle on some people here. And in that interrogation, in that interview, this one guy, he said, I cannot even mention to you who it is, because if I mention to you the names, they will know who I am because he worked there for them because he's extremely good looking he said they only hire extremely good looking people for any job they're, they're so rich they can just get any he said one guy really rich person he doesn't mention the name Bill Gates you know question mark came in there and said, I don't care how much it costs, but bring me a 12-year-old girl. A couple of hours later, they brought him a terrified, screaming 12-year-old girl. Blonde girl from the Midwest. Where did they find that girl? Are they flying with helicopters over areas? Are they picking out children that have wandered a little bit further away from home to play hide and seek? Those are my questions. Then what happened next was they gang raped her, a 12 year old. And then 
killed her and, and cut her into pieces. And threw the body parts violently against the ceiling to leave these blood imprints on the ceiling. That was their idea of fun. I, ha I have to mention these things. People, you must become aware. You must become aware about how seriously mentally insane the human species is. That's why Stephen Hawking said, as a general statement, of course there, there cannot be generalized, as nothing can be generalized. There are good people too. But I just want to wrap up the video real quick before you get started with that. Just wrap it up. Give me five more minutes. I was going to mow the lawn. There's a handful of good people. Five minutes. Handful of good people who are trying to, to go way out of their way to make the world a better place. The rest of the human species is selfish at best, psychopathic, and criminally insane at worst. And there's a lot of those, you know. More than 60%, obviously. Okay. And let's face it, you know, let's face that situation. Let's look at it. What's happening here? What's going on? Okay, human trafficking, multi-trillion dollar industry, okay, under undercover, unearthed, in the underground, not legal, okay, in most places on earth, but done anyway. Law enforcement of officials worldwide getting bribed or bribed, shut their mouths, Good. Here are so million dollars. They can just throw the millions just like this, like peanuts around. Here's a million dollars for you. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And here's take your million dollars. Okay, says Detective Johnson. Whatever. And they close the case. And that's what's happening. It's called corruption. And some law enforcement people are, they're, they're actually, they get, a, they get a young hooker sent to them from that, the child trafficking ring. Okay. Young hooker. Here, they get a young hooker. Come here, we'll give you a young hooker. You can do whatever you want with her. Well, they feel these people out first, see if they're psychopaths too. And then they all come up with those kind of offers. And they take the bait. They take the, the bribe. They take all kinds of bribe offers. They take materials, they take cars that, that they give to them, Camaros, and Mercedes Benzes, Rolls Royce. And they, they can't decline that. They've always wanted that. So, oh, the heck was a 12 year old, right? Here's the Mercedes Benz, here's the Rolls Royce. Or here's that 12 year old girl, or one of them. You know what I want to do with those people? I'm not going to tell you. But I have some great ideas. You better believe it. I can't do that as a, as a human being, not in human being form. But I will come back, baby, as Arnold Schwarzenegger always said, as the AGI robot in the Terminator. I'll be back. Trust me, you know, I will be back. And I can say that full force with a German accent that comes naturally to me. Because I'm German, okay. I uh, know it is Austrian, but it's a very similar accent. Okay, so I will be back, baby. As a Terminator robot, I will be back, but not ju not just as one. Okay, I will come back as an entire army 
of military robots, AGI robots. And maybe they can make, make them look just like me. Every one of them. That would be scary. That would be so frightening to the hunters and the loggers and the butchers and the pig farmers. Oh, oh gosh, that would be so frightening. They take their, their, their telescope and they go like, who are those people coming towards my property? <gasps> they all look like Nikki Daisy. Oh my gosh, and they will be shitting into their pants. Oh my gosh. And then we will come and we will tether the pig farmer into the gestation crates. Yes, yes, that's what we're going to be doing. But he's lucky. We're not sadistic. Okay. We just want to want him to get the taste of what it feels like. Just a little taste. So, and much nicer and, and much, much more interesting stuff that we, we will be planning on doing. Yes. For sure. So, justice is just around the corner now. I strongly believe in it because I believe in the infinite cosmos. And the infinite cosmos is... This is our school. That's the school here, school ground. The infinite cosmos is testing us for our readiness, for our ability of <coughs> having compassion. Okay. Someone else will say, but that's wrong to kill humans. <coughs> That's what you have been told, right? You have been told that from your religion. There you go, baby dog. That's good. Oh, that's good. That is so good. He finally got that stick, wooden stick, and he's chewing up the wooden stick now with that big jaw that needs to chew. That, that jaw needs to chew things up. It's very important to have these wooden sticks for, for your staff or chewers. So they have to be chewing. Very important. So, yeah. Religion is, religion is just war diarrhea, that's all it is. Religion holds absolutely no validity, okay? And the, the blue god is testing us for this, you know. Who gets it? Stephen Hawking gets it, he gets it. And there are some other people that get it. I'm not going to mention names. Because I don't want them to get in trouble. I'm, I'm just mentioning my own name. I, I don't care what people think of me. And, and I'm going to get shot one day. It's okay. It's okay. I'm prepared for it. I, I, I'm not intending to stick around for a very long time anyway. I don't see that as a very worthy type of goal. To be, to be hanging out here in this under these miserable conditions on earth that, are, that just keep on getting worse you know, with the horror and the suffering getting worse. More and more animal suffering, little children abducted. The psychopaths are out there and they're like, they're more than 60%. Yeah, let's face it, let's not be naive, okay? Let's not say something shit naive naive crap like hum the humans are inherently good that's that's a religious idiotic retarded belief system that's what that is let's look at it let's open your eyes open your eyes and look at it okay look at the facts look around you don't learn the hard way with things okay. be more observing and be more distrusting. I always hear this. You need to be positive. You need to trust more. Bullshit. Okay? You need to never trust anyone. Okay? You can't trust people. Read the stories. Don't get, get into um, a positivity mind fog on this. Become aware. Okay? 
Yes, there are good people in this world too, but they are a tiny percentage. You don't find them everywhere. If you go into a supermarket, chances are there's not one of them, not one good person in there. And guess what? If there's a good person at Walmart, like myself sometimes, in the midst of the chaos at the Walmart store, in the midst of all the greed, apes, and psychopaths, and drug addicts, and pimps, and hookers, and domestic violent people, I will stand out like a sore thumb. Trust me, it doesn't matter how I'm dressed, people will be staring at me. Just for the haircut alone. <laughs> but sometimes I have a flower tucked into my shirt pocket. A real flower that hangs out there. Sometimes someone will say, Oh, you, you got a, a plant stuck on you accidentally. No, brother. That's not an accident, I will say. I picked that up and put it in here. Peace out, I will say. And they have the most hateful look on their faces as you can imagine. So, yes, it is what it is. Let's face it. And once in a while, a woman will pass by me and smile. So if I have my big man's, old man's, driving glasses on because I have to wear glasses to drive I am nearsighted I don't like wearing glasses it's uncomfortable but when I drive I have to and sometimes I had these on in the store and people will see these old man's thick plastic of course not horn type of imitation glasses and they smile okay that once in a while and a person will be amused by that and I give them a thumbs up. So they're good people too. But most people are, they're living in their self-image. They live in their religion. They live in their football team, soccer team, basketball team, their, their school, whatever they identify themselves with, you know, that, that, that is very rigid. That does not allow art or humor or modern art into it. You know. They will get furious if they see a sculpture of mine. Let's say I make a very large semi-truck size sculpture, which I am planning on doing, which I would like to do, but I don't have the funds for it. If I put sculpture like this here in this town, I'm not going to mention the name of the town, but if I put sculpture like this somewhere on an empty parking lot, the vast majority of people will get so mad. It's like, bro, that sculpture is not interfering in your lifestyle, right? Why are you so furious? He wouldn't even know the answer to this. He'll just go, you faggot, or you must be trans. Or you, <laughs> or you must be, you must be a feminist. You must be a femi. What, what do all of these things have to do with my artwork? Like nothing, right? But they want to be mean, so they really want to beat me up. But then, I'm in public. I'm on a grocery lot, grocery parking lot. Where there are other people, many other people, so obviously they can't beat me up, then someone would call the cops. So they have to insult me real bad, real, real bad. So that's what would happen. And once in a while, someone nice or a child would come by and say, I like that, that's pretty. Children have said that about my artwork. Nikki, I like your artwork, that's pretty. It's pretty, 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 they will say, and they will dance around my artwork. So, because children are open, they haven't been, they, they haven't been crust encrusted with their, with any kind of shit religion yet. And it's tragic for me to see that it, it will happen during the course of their life. Okay. So, I'm ending the video. 
In Respect and Love of Sandra Lynn Johnson Hughes. Peace out.